And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Simic Flash. We're gonna go ahead and play this one over in Mythic. I know this isn't everybody's favorite deck, but the reason why we're gonna be playing some Simic Flash today is because I expected this deck to pick up in popularity after the Oko ban, uh, especially with the Veil of Summer ban in particular. Um, so yeah, with Veil of Summer getting banned and Oko and everything, I thought that Simic Flash was gonna be uh, more popular honestly. Um, I thought Vela Summer was was a card that was um, definitely holding it back in best of three. But to be honest, since since that banning, which was almost a week ago now, I don't think I've played against Simic Flash a single time. I haven't seen anybody playing it. And what we have been playing against a lot is Jeskai Fires. We've been seeing so much Jeskai Fires. And I feel like Simic Flash is, is really good against Jeskai Fires. Uh, fires so so yeah kind of kind of uh confused about that like how um we're not uh you know yeah so basically i'm just kind of confused about that so i want to i want to try out simic flash myself and see how it goes we're gonna be like i said we're gonna play four matches in mythic let's see how the deck uh plays and everything and see what's like what's happening of why are people not really playing so much um simic flash so um yeah so that's basically what what i got there um i i'm somebody who i really like spectral sailor i know not not everybody does but i really like spectral sailor because um well i like drawing cards yeah i guess that's it there you go <laughs> yeah but this is just like a really cheap threat that uh late game whenever things don't necessarily go our way um, or, you know, like if we're just kind of flooding out or, you know, can't really get through, got, can't find like night, night pack ambushers, that kind of stuff. We could just sit back, draw a lot of cards. Um, I have seen, I guess, yeah, I have seen like some Simic Flash list play uh, um, Nissa these days, but I'm not as big a fan of Nissa, especially with all these Jeskai Fires decks playing tons of Deafening Clarions. And, you know, then they'll have like, they could have time wipes and stuff too, but, you know, they're all all about Deafening Clarion. And so I, I don't know about Nissa. Um, but then Gross Spiral is another option here. And I, I could see us playing Gross Spiral, but I'm I'm not going with it. I'm just going with a, a bunch of interaction, going with more interaction with Unsummons and Borrowers and a good amount of Counterspells. 12 Counterspells in the main deck besides, you know, not counting the Frilled Mystics. You know, so 12 just blue counters in the main. So that's what, that's what we're just uh, going with here. All right. Um, Wildborn Preserve... Preserver in the sideboards, like for, for aggro matchups, we can bring in a couple more threats for the aggro matchups. You know, if we're playing against a creature heavy deck, we got a couple more essence captures. Um, against Fires of Invention, we got a bunch of Disdainful Strokes and another Negate in the sideboard, either Gus if we need those. Uh, Mystical Disputes, real you know, really need these against Teferi decks in particular. But yeah, let's let's give this a try. Let's see. Because I feel like this deck's good. I'm just not playing against it at all, and so I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, Blast Zone would definitely help the cat matchup. You could play. You know, if you're really worried about the cat matchup, you definitely could play like Graft Digger's Cage or Sorcerer's Spyglass in the sideboard. But I think the most popular Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven deck is probably Jund because Corvold is amazing, and the Jund deck is all about Vraska Golgari Queen. And so I don't really like playing those artifacts to try to like slow them down over a long period of time because of all the Vraska Golgari Queens. Yeah, Mono Black uh, Discard is uploading right now. It will probably be up on YouTube in about 30 minutes, would probably be my guess. Hi, what's up, Yud? All right, so keeping a land heavy hand. There's only 24 lands in this, this deck. And... Uh, we got all, you know, got very good colors of mana. We'll give this a try. I hope my opponent attacks for two here. Or attacks for zero, sorry. I hope they attack for zero. And we can just play this thing with reach and block. Alright, so unfortunately it does look like we're playing against Jund Sacrifice deck, which is definitely not a matchup I, I think that is going to favor us, but... Like, I don't think we're favored here. We want to be playing against the Fires decks, but... Oh, well, it's it's good to try it out. See how bad it really feels. 
Ooh, maybe it's not Jund. Maybe it's just Golgari. Hmm. Alright, so while I am technically thinning the deck, we also scried that breeding pool down to the bottom, so I'm also shuffling that breeding pool back. So it's not like I'm really thinning the deck that much. Method to protect the Ambusher, unfortunately. I'm kind of expecting Murderous Rider the next turn. If they would have had Murderous Rider mana up here, I probably would have just led with the Preserver. They didn't, so Ambusher it is. Maybe they don't have Murderous Rider, though. That'd be awesome. But it seems pretty likely that they do. They don't. That's awesome. Okay, bad flood. This is why we're playing four Siren Storm Tamers. That's we're definitely not playing four Siren Storm Tamers. That card's not legal. Let's try that again. So we're playing four Spectral Sailor. So yeah, I could keep on making Preserver big, but it's not like we're not really getting through that Foulmire Knight anyway. I like, I like just getting that Foul Mire Knight out of here. Yeah, so I was saying 24 lands. That's what I was trying to say there. Hey, some Mexican with the sub. Thanks for resubbing there, saying, Hi, I've been enjoying your YouTube content. I wanted to say thank you for making good decks. Well, you're welcome. Thank you so much for that support. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming in here using your Twitch Prime sub. I'm glad you're enjoying the YouTube content. All right, so they did find Murderous Rider before I found any spell whatsoever. My opponent's continuing to hit their land drops. Pretty well also, so maybe they got a couple more of those in hand. It's not it doesn't make sense for us to hold the, the lands though, because again of uh, Spectral Sailor. Well that card's game. I mean, I, I have to have Spectral Sailor to just try to draw as many cards as they can, but it's really unlikely. Okay. So that can bounce the Great Henge. Now we need to draw a Counterspell for the Great Henge.
mean, my, my opponent can already outgrind me, though. With just his trail of crumbs and infinite mana. So yeah, it's 10 lands, but then, you know, we got rid of these two also, so 11, 12. So halfway through those. All right, we're at least we're All right, so we saw the breeding you remember we scribed the breeding pool down to the bottom. Well, we've seen all four breeding pools, so that came back for us to see. So 13 lands. So there's only 11 left. We need Spectral Sailor. Wrong double S card. This is just such a good engine when you have infinite mana. Yeah, Return to Nature could definitely be a sideboard card for this deck. That that could definitely be a sideboard card I'm I'm overlooking. I like I like that so much more. All right, I'm gonna give it to this other trailer crumbs. I like that much, much more than Spyglass and and uh, and Grafteer's Cage. Like those cards, I don't like those cards at all. Return to Nature, that's a, that's a real card. We could definitely play that. All right, I need to get this fourth in the gate. I'm just not I'm not too confident in quench doing stuff. Cuz yeah, a bunch of artifacts and enchantments which is what my opponent's using to kill me. It's tough, yeah. So, it's a good. That's a good, good suggestion. Return to nature. I think we're gonna add those in after this match. I don't even know if Wildborn Preserver is that good against like their one mana death touchers and stuff like that. Yeah, they have a lot of cards that are a problem. Yeah, that, that one mana one one death touchers are huge problem and obviously obviously edgewall innkeeper being one mana this thing means I can't I can't attack through this thing either
<laughs> yeah, we need mental in this step. This deck is kind of filled with all of the things that give us trouble. Combining Edgewall Innkeeper with Witch's Oven Trail of Crumbs. Well, our hope is on them not having very much mana. It's definitely where our hope lies right now. They don't have the mana to activate, like they missed the land drop. Yeah, so mental misstep costs zero mana. That's the it's a Phyrex because it's Phyrexian, and it just costs two life. So for two life for zero mana you can counter a spell that costs one with CMC one. That card's banned in everything. Basically. Yeah, that card's a problem. Hey, what's up, Scar? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Scar. So I thought how they shocked in there, I thought the reason why I played the 2-1 the Brianborn Cutthroat instead of Nightpack Ambusher the previous turn, because I thought it was pretty likely that they were gonna that they had Swift End. And that's what they, they wanted so like they were gonna be Swift Ending the Ambusher. And that's why I played the 2-1 last turn. This is a really good deck against the McFlash, though, that my opponent's playing. So how many Return to Natures do we play? Two or three?
We've hit our opponent so many times with this brazen borrower in there at 11. Well, I'm trying. All right, I just got to fetch. They stop asking me to respond. Certainly wish bounce our own thing with Brazen Borrower here. Can they do five damage to me here? Hopefully not. So I guess what I, I didn't quite think about is the problem with bouncing Gilded Goose is they could just sack the Gilded Goose to the Witch's Oven and then my borrower goes away. And then, of course, they have the food to gain life. So I don't think that's a very good play. That was that was my plan for my play all along. But that gets rid of a brazen bar that you know, I, I think I want my brazen borrower out here. <laughs> no, no, this is not a this is not a good matchup for me. Well, I, I definitely want to bounce and then cast, because I want to get two counters on these cutthroats. And so I think it's best just to bounce the the oven and not let them you know sack in response to something i can i can now top deck a so now the thing is if i top deck uh, by doing this 
if, if I do top deck it an unsummon or another brazen borrower, if I if I top deck a bounce spell for this Gilded Goose, now I can have lethal. Still lethal if we draw it. a bounce spell. Darn, I didn't. Yeah, I have unsummon and borrower. We had a few hits. But now it's just lethal on my opponent's side. All right, so yeah, that, that looked like basically everything in the format that is really good against Simic Flash all in one deck. That is not something I want to ever play against again. All right, so yeah, Return to Nature. Let's get some of these in here. That's a good idea. I don't really need three Ether Gusts. Or three Disdainful Stroke. Honestly, I'm not sure about... Maybe I just don't even really need these Wildborn Preservers either. <laughs> yeah, we started today at number 20. Um, our first two decks going. Well, if we just play all Return to Natures... Those kind of decks are playing four oven, four um, trailer crumbs. Because Spyglass is very easy to kill. And also Spyglass doesn't deal with trailer crumbs. Which a lot of times trailer crumbs is the real problem. So do I, all right, we'll just do that for now. Return to nature is a, a real removal spell where spyglass is a band-aid. Hey, Spectral Sailor. That card would have been good. Last game. I'm, we'll see if it's good here. Alright, so we cut a Disdainful Stroke, a Capture, and a Wildborn Preserver. Nope, this looks like not the matchup for a Spectral Sailor. Why can't we just play against Fires of Invention? Uh. Packers or Niners? Um, 
I really like the, the Niners defense and I think their quarterback is I think he's underrated. I think he's he's just fine. A lot of people say that's the weakness of their team. So I'm gonna go Niners. The thing is the Niners are kinda due for some losses, but so are the Packers. I know, right? We've played against Fires of Invention like all week. It's like the number one deck by far all week, and so we play like two decks, so that's what I really want to play against. And now it's just like all this this aggro and everything. Okay, well. Yeah, I went. I mean, I went like a, a few days without seeing any any Cauldron Familiar decks, any cat decks. But it looks like they're starting to pick back up again now. Because yeah, right after right after the banning, I was expecting a ton of Cauldron Familiar and a ton of Simic Flash, and didn't see either of those for a while. I mean, to be to be fair, when I was facing the, I was at like you know like number like I was a whole lot lower number whenever I was facing the Jeskai Fires decks, a lot. I don't know if there's any difference there. I, I don't know. I don't even know if that's. I don't even know if my first starting statement of to be fair even is fair. There. I just want the breeding pool in play. I'm just shocking it in. I wonder if I should get the counter on the Spectral Sailor. I don't like the, that thing having reach. I don't care if they play this card. I don't like that thing having reach. Boo. And another one.
Because if I would have just drawn a card during my turn, I, you know, I held up like the mana, but if I would have just drawn the card during my turn, I would have been able to play that land drop. So yeah, now I don't have this land drop now. Yeah, like we we've, we've seen like Spectral Sailor is just pretty good. You know, like we got to draw a couple of cards here. And you know, this is like the really aggro matchup. But yeah, that that last match where the ma the match took forever, Spectral Sailors would have been really nice. It was definitely the best card in my deck. I mean, didn't draw it at all. That's okay, it happens. Sweet. So basically, I just didn't have to kill the Crusader because the Crusader was going to do another point of damage to them and then just attack them for two in the air. So I only played two Spectral Sailors, but they were good. I think I like that anyway. Robber of the Rich is having reach. is rough. A lot of R words. So this is going to be a tough one to win on the draw. Especially how you know, like they're playing Drill Bit and everything. Yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup on the draw. I'll be surprised if we win. But that's why we play the games. If only we're on the play. It's on the, the tombstone of Simic Flash. If only we were on the play. Jack and Diane. So, you know, like, the Preserver can... Preserver could just eat the Fervent Champion right now. Or I could try to get the Brineborn Cutthroat in first. Oh. I thought my opponent passed. I was I was actually just gonna plan I was planning on just quenching the Rimrock Knight. That was my plan here. Darn. Ugh, that was honestly my plan. But just that first strike damage and then it goes back to it it just kind of it had the feeling like they just they just passed and didn't want to play something else out into a counter spell. Yeah. So yeah, that that hurt. Um, it's definitely my plan. So about this Knight of the Ebon Legion. It's gonna be the difficult card now. But I guess now my best play is just to block here.
I think if we were on the play, we would have had this one. Also, if I would have sequenced a little better, like I was planning to. But I guess it's not over yet. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted the, the extra blocker in play. You know, I just countered something. I was basically priced into countering anything at all that they would could or would play. That was a good draw. I don't know why I didn't just have the preserver block that thing. I should have. I was just... Just kind of focused on the preserver blocking later. But yeah, I should have just had the preserver block that thing. Well, I didn't play this game perfectly at all, so I can only kind of blame myself. Well, I'm glad they just activated Knight of the Oven Legion for no reason. They could have played Gutter Bones. Still not dead. Not dead yet. If they would have just played Gutter Bones and Rimrock Knight, which they could have last turn. But obviously now... Now we have these trade, and I gotta find something for Fervent Champion. Okay, they're just gonna do the double activate. All right. Ugh. Well, I didn't play that perfectly. I made I made a couple of mistakes, and can't make mistakes on the draw in that matchup. All right, so we found some weaknesses for Simic Flash, a whole bunch of one drops. I know, and someone, where were you? All right, we'll see if we can play against the Fires of Invention deck. Or even again, if I, I mean, maybe if I would have played that game perfectly, I, I think I could have had a chance. I made a couple of pretty bad mistakes. You know, with the, with the cut, with the cutthroat and then also with the block. If I would have played perfectly, maybe we could have had that.
Alright, we're banking on finding another green source. Sabotage is a good curve filler. And we got the green, so we have a real good curve here. Looks like a Simic Flash Mirror. But they got turn three Ambusher on the play. That's rough. I don't know. I'm kind of just giving up for today. <laughs> Gosh, this is so rough. Gilly Goose really sp sped them up. Looked, looked good. Gilly Goose looked good. <sighs> okay. So what are we going to do? There's none of these these uh, rest these 72 cards that are useless. Just kind of finding which ones that we want to play. Quench seems like the easiest to kind of play around. I guess capture is just a better disdainful stroke. Gus is basically only if the thing's in play. This is Knocking at the Door by the Arkells. Like ARK, A-R-K, and then E-L-L-S. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't, I shouldn't give up. 
Let's just ban. It's been a rough day. You know, that happens though. We're doing best of one day Monday tomorrow. This Gilda Goose has looked awesome. I wanted to take another draw step before I fetched so I could see if I, you know, if I drew a blue land that I could, knew that I was going to need more green and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, without drawing a land, I'll play the second fetch. If we would have drawn a land, I would have saved the second fetch for my fourth land drop. But now I'll just get them both out of the way. Get, you know, one blue, one green. Yeah, these Gilded Goose that my opponents have been playing have been just been amazing. Especially when they're on the play. They just get so much more mana than me. See so yeah, this is this is my opponent's turn three, and they're casting Brineborn Cutthroat with still having three mana up. Yeah, Brineborn plus Sabotage on turn three. Yeah, Goose has always been a really good card against aggro. You know, blocking that those fervent champions that are doing a lot of damage, just getting those food food to gain you that that little bit of life. Just gave me a, a window to resolve Frilled Mystic, though. Get a creature in play.
So I know Mystical Demise would have countered that, but I want the Surveil. Mystical Dispute would have countered that. Got a good amount of threats in our deck. Maybe we'll find one. I'll just never find one ever. This is boring. <laughs> There's just nothing for me to do. My phone's just gonna sit back, make make food. Can we draw a threat, please? Any threat? Get a spectral sailor, a wolf. Take a Brazen Borrower. Any of them. This is why I like Spectral Sailor so much, because, yeah, these these kind of games happen all the time with Simic Flash. And so Spectral Sailor this is why I want to play four of them. Because it can just sit back and, and draw cards for you. My opponent's not making two food a turn, two food a turn, because they don't want me to resolve something. Like they want to keep two mana up for a counter spell. Yay, we got something. So I could have just resolved the ambusher there, because then I have I have negate plus dispute. But then of course my opponent would get to resolve something then. So do we think they have three counter spells available here? Like they're not playing they're not playing lands. So they'd have to have like a two mana counter for ambusher plus a dispute plus a dispute. That doesn't seem too likely, right? Okay, good. Oh wait, they have a lot more than one mana. They have all these gilded geese. geese. Right, I was thinking they just had four mana. They have they have seven mana. <laughs> yeah, long day, long day. Uh, this has not been my best played league, for sure.
Oh, it's playing so slowly, too. Okay, you feel okay? Alright, so they did have triple counter spell because they had seven mana. At least something happened though. Yay! Spectral Sailor! Okay. What's wrong, buddy? Do you need to go to the vet? You have a cold. You need some antibiotics. At least we've had a, a couple of turns of, of stuff happening. All right, got the backup sailor. I know this isn't like the best trade for me. But I don't think I just sit back and take it. Even though I know I know that means that this Wicked Wolf is going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. I don't really want to invest too much mana in that Wildborn Preserver. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If, Hawkeye doesn't really act like he's sick, but he's just he's had the sniffles like that for like a week. Maybe he's got either allergies or a little cold. So of course I'm gonna have to start chump blocking this spectral or this wicked wolf pretty soon.
That match took way longer than it needed to. But yeah, Gilded Goose looked awesome. All right, well, we've had a, a real long stream here. We started this after when we normally when we normally end because of, because of the, the stream, because I only got to play the two decks yesterday. So we're just going to end it here. That was a, not a very enjoyable game to play. So yeah, I don't know. Um, my opponent's deck looked pretty good with have, you know, having Gilded Goose and Wicked Wolf. That definitely looked good. Like Those are two good cards against aggro, against aggro and that's, that's what we kind of saw that we were struggling against aggro. I love the return to natures in the sideboard. I think that's, that's just something that I, I really wish I would have had that during the first match. Our second match was close. Uh, game three, I, I made two mistakes, and uh, those two mistakes cost me in game three. Uh, even if I would not have made those mistakes, maybe we didn't win, but it wasn't like a for sure win, but I made two mistakes that definitely hurt. Um, and then, yeah, that, that third match, my opponent looked to have a better Simic Flash deck against us. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe that's that's something to, to go towards. You know, maybe you know not playing on summons, playing like Gilded Goose instead here, trim down a little bit on these and like, and you know probably don't play Wildborn Preservers or something. But yeah, maybe get yeah I don't know that looks good. I wish we would have played some Mc, or I wish we would have played against Jeskai Fires. Just to, I wanted to just you know see how it played out and everything, but we didn't. Um, yeah, so yeah, Gilded Goose with Wicked Wolf and Simic Flash. So yeah, it helps that should help out that would help out a lot against aggro. And yeah, you still have like your good game against fires and everything. Um But yeah, like that Trail of Crumbs, you know, the, those Trail of Crumbs decks, those are definitely good. And I could see playing I could honestly play see playing four return to nature. I was gonna try three, but I could definitely see playing four. Because Witches Oven and Trail of Crumbs, you know, like they play eight artifacts and enchantments that you really want to kill. So it feels like having four of those in the sideboard could definitely be important. Um, but there we go. All right, so that's that's uh, Simic Flash. You know, definitely learned a lot here. That's that's good. That's um, that's really what we're what we're doing is you know with playing like these different decks and stuff. Like I said, I just haven't seen Simic Flash at all since rotation obviously therefore i i played and we just get a mirror <laughs> obviously i hadn't seen it an entire week and we get a mirror that's our luck but um but yeah we definitely learned a whole lot um with those three games all three of them uh, there we go but that's so that's simic flash um so if you're if you're uh, watching the video later on youtube hope you learned a lot too and i uh, hope you enjoyed it and of course I hope you hit that like button over there and um, and everything. And feel free to leave some comments. Let me know. Um, let me know what you think about Simic Flash. Like if you're if you're playing a lot of Simic Flash, like are you doing Gilded Goose, Wicked Wolf stuff? Um, yeah, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Let me know um, because I, I feel like this deck is is a lot better than what that, that there's just not people playing it. But but anyway, there we go. That's Simic Flash. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.